through the day's papers. Alison Sargent is here with us to do that. You're starting, Alison, in Denmark, where lawyers have been voting to ban the desecration of religious texts after a series of Quran burnings sparked a backlash. What's that all about? Well, we can start with the front page of the Danish paper Politik in their photo shows that vote in Parliament yesterday. A Denmark Social Democrat government presented this bill as a security measure after Quran burnings in both Denmark and Sweden sparked protests in some Muslim countries. Now, the Justice Minister said the burnings risked harming Danes both at home and abroad. The new law makes it illegal to desecrate all religious texts, so not just the Quran, but also uh, the Bible and the Torah. It passed by 94 votes. Uh, to 77. Uh, but that was only after a very heated debate in Parliament. Uh, we can take a look at another Danish paper. They're calling it the Koran Circus. Uh, they're one of several papers noting that none of the MPs from the ruling Social Democrats participated in the debate. Uh, they were all conspicuously silent. Uh, papers in Denmark this morning do appear kind of globally quite critical of this law um, having be been passed. We can take a look uh, at another one. The Yilland's Post in points out that Denmark has chosen to go further uh, than other Nordic countries. The paper quotes an MP from the right-wing nationalist Danish People's Party. Uh, they said, it is frightening that the politically correct prohibition Sweden will be more free than Denmark in the future. Turning then to France, Alison. We spoke about this a little bit earlier. Gérard Depardieu, he's once again in the spotlight for his allegedly inappropriate sexual behaviour. How's that being covered here? I'm sorry. Well, Depardieu has been under investigation in a case of rape since 2020, and there have been some dozen other accusations of sexual misconduct since then. As we read uh, in 20 Minutes here, the latest allegation came in a televised investigation that aired last night. And that investigation also includes what papers are calling shocking footage of Depardieu uh, on a trip to North Korea in 2018. Uh, I watched some of it, and it is pretty appalling. There's a two and a half minute clip circulating online uh, where Depardieu is making constant sexual comments. He talks about uh, how much his hard penis weighs. He also sexualizes a little girl who's riding a horse. Uh, it's very uncomfortable to watch. And the footage comes uh, from a film that actually never aired uh, by the French writer, uh, Yann Moix, who it's uh, worth noting has also come under um, criticism for making sexist comments of his own. Now, he told Le Figaro uh, that his producer gave journalists the footage without his consent, and he's going to file a lawsuit. Now, part of what's shocking here is that Depardieu really made this, these comments in front of the camera. He knew that he was being filmed. He kind of did it for the camera, you would say. Um, and the behavior really doesn't come as a surprise to many French actresses. Uh, in the HuffPost here, we see the reaction of one actress, Ariane Labed. Uh, she says that ongoing tolerance for Depardieu shows that the Me Too movement you know, hasn't really taken off here in France. She says people speak out, but they're not really being listened to. Alison, we're moving on. We're staying in France, but on a much lighter note, we're going to talk about Notre Dame. In exactly a year's time, the cathedral is set to reopen after being badly damaged in that fire back in 2019. How is this latest development being covered? Well, the Notre Dame is getting a lot of love in the French papers today. We can see uh, Aujourd'hui en France on their front page here is talking about the fabulous renaissance of the cathedral. Uh, in that photo, uh, if you look through the scaffolding, you can see the spire that was just installed last week. Now, to mark the one-year countdown to the reopening, President Emmanuel Macron is going to be visiting Notre Dame today to check out the progress. Uh, the paper L'Opinion points out uh, that all of this is so far going according to Ma Emmanuel Macron's timeline. He promised to rebuild Notre Dame within five years. So far, that's on track. Uh, the paper writes also that Macron is really trying to make the Notre Dame a symbol of his determination and of Macronism. They point out that he's already visited six times since the fire to check out the reconstruction work and also to brag about it. And if we zoom in uh, on the cartoon on the front page of L'Opinion, uh, you'll recognize there as gargoyles some of Emmanuel Macron's political rivals, notably uh, Marine Le Pen. Uh, Macron there is saying, I'm quite proud of this personal touch that I've added. Now, it might be bad news, presumably, for many of the tourists who are going to be here in Paris next year for the Olympics itself. Notre Dame, it's looking like it definitely won't be open in time for the Games. Yeah, the Notre Dame is going to look like its old self on the outside, at least, but it's not going to be open to the public to go inside. In this cartoon, uh, for Aujourd'hui en France, we see Macron lamenting that it's not going to be open. Uh, but then Paris mayor there in Hidalgo is saying, well, you know, we could actually postpone the Olympics because that would work out well for me. Uh, and indeed, uh, Sharon, there are growing concerns that Paris is not ready for the Olympics, notably uh, when it comes to transportation. 
uh, Van Minut is asking here, are Parisians going to be urged not to use public transport during the games? Now that's after a prefect, a prefect from the Paris region reportedly said that the transportation system will only be able to handle all of the Olympic spectators if actual people who live in Paris stay home. That led to many papers talking about a possible Olympics lockdown. Now that's obviously not going to be the case, uh, but there are real, real concerns about transportation for this summer. Finally, from you, Alison, we have a new Colour of the Year for 2024. What is it going to be next year? Sharon, it's going to be Peach Fuzz, uh, which feels like a bit of a let letdown, I have to say, after this year's uh, colour, which was bright Viva Magenta, which turned out to be pretty appropriate, of course, because this summer everyone was wearing bright pink after the Barbie movie came out. It's a little harder to get excited about Peach Fuzz. The New York Times is wondering if it's going to catch on, uh, but I think it sounds like a better idea when you read a little bit more about it. Uh, Time Magazine explains it symbolizes human compassion and connection, which I think is something that we could all use more of. Sounds peachy. Alison, thank you so much. That is Alison Sargent joining us there with our press review.